you're watching Power Nation. Today on Carcass, we have an abandoned project that's a little rough around the edges and we want to turn it into a daily driver. We'll show you how to repair rust in the common treble areas, plus give you several tips on how to straighten out minor body damage. What's up everyone, welcome to Carcass. Today we have an OBS Chevy in the shop and although we did build one last season, this is for a very different purpose. This truck has a ton of miles, it has dents and dings, it has rust in a few places, and we wanna use it as a platform to show you guys how you can fix something like this and bring it back in better condition. It really doesn't matter if it's a Ford, a Chevy, or a Dodge, or if it's a car or a truck. Like Jimmy said, we're gonna use this as a platform to kinda of show you guys how to straighten out your vehicle and do a little bit of body work. So we're gonna be pulling out a couple of dents and dings. We're also gonna be doing some rust repair. And this truck has the one spot where they most commonly like to rust. And that's right down here at the cab corner. Now the plus side to this being the most common spot that the trucks rust out is that they make a repair panel to fix pretty much every make and model. And with the cost of these repair panels, it really doesn't make any sense to try to fix what this little hole is down here. We're just gonna go ahead and replace the entire cab corner. And the easiest way to get to that cab corner is we just got to get rid of the box first. And if you don't have a cherry picker handy to get the bed off, just ask a couple friends. It's easy to take off. Ready? Like we've shown you before, we'll use a heat gun to apply a little bit of heat to the molding and then use a scraper to peel it right off. All right, now that we have the bed off, we can have a really good look at how much rust is down here in the cab corner. So that thing's pretty much shot. We picked up this replacement cab corner from Summit Racing, and the idea here is to only use what we need. So we're gonna come and cut this right at the body line. And the reason why we're doing it at the body line is when we go back to weld this together, we're gonna be adding a lot of heat to this thin sheet metal. Heat equals warpage, and that equals more body work. But when you do some of your welding on a body line, it stays a little bit stronger, less warpage, less body work. So the idea here is we'll come across, cut this right here on the body line, get this all peeled off, and then we'll get the new one put right back on. When cutting off body panels, make sure to keep your cutting disc really shallow because you never know what's behind the panel and you don't want to cut or damage anything else. All right, we have the cab corner off. As you guys can see, there's a little bit of rust damage down here inside. We're not too concerned about that, but we will take care of it a little later. What I have to do yet is actually center punch all of the spot welds over here on the pinch weld areas, and then we'll have to just drill those out as well. We'll just keep moving right along here. out of there, that works. All right guys, let's talk about the rust that's down here inside the cab area. Now there's two ways to go about fixing this. If you guys are gonna restore the truck, what you could do is cut all of this out, but you probably would have to make your own repair panels because they don't make any patch panel for this. Or you could do what we're gonna do, and that's just mainly stop or slow down new rust from forming. So what we're gonna do is grab the wire wheel here, we'll clean all of this up, and then we're gonna spray it with some rust fix. We'll let that dry. From there, we'll go on to test fitting the cab corner.
Okay, now that we have the rust all cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead and spray this with some rust fix. Um, I know this kind of looks like it is rust. It's not, it's actually some sound deadening that they sprayed from the factory. Um, so we'll go ahead and spray everything down here. We'll give it a couple of coats and then we'll move on to installing the cab corner. To treat this, we're using a couple coats of Duplicolor's Rust Fix. All right, well now that we have the inside all taken care of, we can cut the new cab corner to fit. There's two ways you guys can do this. You can actually take the old piece that you cut out, lay it on top of your cab corner, trace and cut it out. Or what we did is we cut right here on the body line. So all I'm going to do is take the body line of the new cab corner, we'll come up about an eighth or a quarter of an inch, and we'll make our cut line there. That way, as I test fit it onto the truck, I can sneak up to our original cut line, and then we can get it to fit perfectly. So I'll head over to the bench, we'll cut this down to fit, and we'll get this thing welded on the truck. With our patch panels cut out, we'll show you how to make it fit like new. All right guys, well, we have the old cab corner out and the new cab corner is fitting very nicely. Now to get this prepped and ready for installation, we're gonna have to punch a series of holes in these two flanges here. We'll have to come back, take the E coating off of the panel and we'll have to take the paint off of the truck. Then we'll fire up the welder and get this puppy installed. Yeah, that fits really nice. To punch our holes, we're using our pneumatic Matco Tools hole punch. It makes short work of projects like this. Then we'll start prepping the body by removing the paint so we can get ready to weld. All right, guys, so the panel's in, test fit's done, and it's all prepped and ready to weld. A couple things you're gonna want. One, your welder, you're gonna want a low amperage. We're not looking for any type of structural welding here. We're just trying to hold two pieces of steel together. And two, and most importantly, you want a little tiny screwdriver. What you can do with this is actually get it up in between the two pieces of metal and shift it around. The closer you can get these parts to fit, the less body work you have to do. So that's what we're shooting for. It fits pretty good, so we'll go ahead and throw the helmet on, put a couple tacks in place. We'll start off with some nice small tacks, then we can always come back and adjust the welder from there. Once we've got it tacked in, we'll start filling in between each one of the welds. So we're gonna start stitching it together. We'll do short pulls of the trigger, creating a stitch weld. That way we don't drive a lot of heat into the panel, causing it to warp. So just take your time and move all the way around the panel. From there, we'll fill in the holes with some rosette welds. All right, well, we're all welded up and it's time to move on to a very crucial step, and that's grinding. What we've done is stacked up two cutoff wheels so it gives us a little more thickness, and we're gonna lay the grinder across the weld like this. Now, as we grind, we're gonna pay attention to when we either touch the top or the bottom part of our metal, and then we're gonna stop or we're gonna move on quickly. What we don't wanna do is take too much material away and chance this cracking down the road. So we're just gonna barely brush across the top and knock all that down. And then we're gonna come across it with a flap disc and smooth out the line that we just welded up. A smooth line means less body work, and that means you get the job done a whole lot quicker. That should do that just fine. All right, well, we're all done grinding and it actually turned out pretty straight, but we are gonna add a little bit of body filler. Now, what I like to do is put some deep scratches into the steel here, and what that does is it helps the filler really bite and attach to the metal. So you can use sandpaper, anything from 36 to 80 grit. So we'll go ahead and sand this down a little bit. We'll mix up some mud and get it on the truck. Look 
mix this until it's consistently kind of a grayish blue. Get all, everything mixed in nicely so it sets up evenly when you put it on the truck. With our body filler set up, it's time to start sanding. Now we're gonna do this in a couple of stages. We're gonna start with 80 grit. We're slowly gonna work our way all the way up to 320 grit. And we're gonna try to make this as smooth as possible. And from there, shoot a little bit of primer on it and it's ready for some paint. We also have a couple more things that we do wanna do. We got some dents and dings on the hood that we wanna take care of. But for now, I'm gonna get this thing sanded and get it close to being ready for some primer. Coming up, Pesky dent repair that doesn't damage your paint. Jeremy made some great progress on the cab corner of our Chevy 1500 pickup. It's all smoothed out and ready for paint, but there's some more damage on the hood that we want to take care of. There's actually three different types of dents on the hood, and this one up here has got a little bit of a crease to it. This dent right here actually has some paint damage to it, but there's a dent over here that's kind of the run of the mill dent. It doesn't have any paint damage at all, so we're going to do some PDR or paintless dent repair to this one, and Jimmy actually has a pretty cool tool that's going to help us take care of this. Like Jeremy said, we're doing a paintless dent repair, which is a great option if you can do it because it's going to save you a lot of time and money in the long run, not having to prep a panel and eventually go and paint it. This dent fix kit that we got from Matco Tools includes everything that we need to do that on our green truck, including hot glue gun, glue sticks, a large variety of pulling nibs, a squeeze puller, slide hammer, and some shaping tools to give us a lot of options for whatever we are working on. And to show you how this thing works, we'll head over to the truck and get started. All right, so the idea here is you don't want to like really press it down against the panel. You want to leave about an eighth inch of glue between the nib and the panel. Um, so we just kind of have to let this set up and then we'll start pulling on it. So another thing with this is that you don't want to just jam on the handle because you might pull the nib out or you might overdo um, pulling the dent out. So you just want to kind of watch it very carefully, just kind of massage it. All right, so I think we got quite a bit of the dent out, so I'm going to take this off and just check it and we'll see where we're at. To get the glue to release, we'll just spray it with some of this release spray and then use a scraper to get it off. Yeah, it's really easy. So I've got the majority of this dent pulled out, but I think I'm gonna go back and do a little more massaging to get it looking a little bit better. But the beauty of this system is that the paint in this area hasn't been disturbed at all. So once you get the desired result, there's no finishing work really to be done. Of course, this truck has a lot of other issues, and on the other side of the hood, there's some dents and creases that have the paint chipped off already. So Jeremy's gonna show you how to fix those using one more method. Now to take care of the dents on the other side of the hood, we're gonna have to do something a little more aggressive and use a tool called a stud gun, and that involves removing some paint. It's kinda close to what Jimmy was doing, but it's just a little bit different. Jimmy, how did this turn out? It came out really good. Um, I'm very impressed with how like none of the paint got damaged whatsoever, so I'm curious how your side's gonna come out. Yeah, this dent's a little bit different. Well, we're gonna take a really good look at this first before we dive into it. All right, so let's take a really good look at this dent right here. There's actually a crease, or there's two creases in it, and that's why we can't use the glue gun to pull this out. It's just gonna take entirely too much force to reverse this dent. But before we get in here and start grinding paint to put some of the studs on to do the pull, we're gonna take a really good look on the back side because we might be able to push on that dent from the back and get it out just a little bit. There's actually a little access hole back here, like a manufacturing hole that they have, and I can feel the dent. It's kind of right at the very edge of it. So I'm gonna grab some tools, and we'll see if we can't push this out just a little bit. I don't think we'll get the whole thing out, but we might be able to help it so I don't have to do as much work with the stud gun. So I'll go grab some tools here quick, and we'll see what we can do. All right. 
First thing to do before you get started is to give yourself plenty of light. Then we're gonna take these little picks here. We're actually gonna get up and start tapping on the bottom side of the crease. We're gonna do that really lightly and slowly move that dent up. And then when we're done, we'll go ahead, grab the stud gun and finish this whole thing off. One well, of the big things is as you're doing it too, don't be afraid to check and see how it's going. That's pretty close. I mean, that's probably as close as we're gonna get it using this type of method, I guess. And from here, we use the stud gun because there's a low on this side. We still got a little high in the center and a low on this side. So what I'm gonna end up doing is taking some of the paint off and then we're gonna use the stud gun. We'll pull the lows back up. We'll tap the high down and see how we look. All right, now we're all ready to weld the studs on. We're gonna be using a Matco tool stud gun. What that does is it welds these little copper studs onto the bare metal. So you just set it onto the spot where you like it or where you want it to be. Push it down, pull the trigger. And what that does, that welds that stud onto the low spot. Now what we'll do is we'll weld a series of these studs onto this panel in a couple different areas. Then we'll come back, make a couple pulls, and see how straight we can get this thing. Don't go away. We finished showing you how to straighten out minor body damage on your daily driver. All right, guys, well, we've been removing some dents on the hood, and Jimmy took care of the one on the passenger side using the paintless dent removal process. And I've been tackling the one on the driver's side that had a bit of a crease in it. Now, we did a little bit of work from the backside using a hammer and kind of a little pick to try to drive it out, but we couldn't quite get it perfect, so we welded a couple studs on it, and now we're going to finish it off doing a little pull. We're going to be using a couple different tools for that, this little T-handle here, and if that doesn't work, we're going to move on to the slide hammer, but first we'll try the T-handle and see if I can't just pull it out. Just to kind of bite on there. I'm going to try to do some pulls. Now, it is moving, but I don't know if it's staying there. We're not going for perfection here. We know we have to put a little bit of mud on it, but I think from here we'll check it with a straight edge. And then if we have to give it a little tap with a slide hammer, we can do that too. Check it with a straight edge. It's a little, just a little low yet. It's probably good enough to put a little bit of mud on it, the body filler. But we'll give it a couple taps with the slide hammer, bring it up. Now for the slide hammer, it's basically the same except we're just going to kind of use it to jar the panel up, or a little dent I guess. Now we've got maybe a sixteenth of an inch here. So we'll call that, we know we're going to have to do a little bit of body filler work. We'll snip off the studs with a side cutter and then grind them flat. All right, so this dent is pretty straight and it feels pretty good and it's ready for some body filler work, but we do have a couple more dents up here on the hood and those are gonna be basically rinse and repeat to what we did up front here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of these quick, then we can prep these so we can put body filler on both spots at the same time and just tackle it like that. All right, well, we're all prepped and ready to put down some filler, and you guys are probably wondering why I have such a large area prepped around the two small dents that we took care of. But there is a reason for that. So as you start laying out your filler, you're naturally going to make the area a little bit bigger and bigger with the coverage of your filler. So that's why you always just make it a little bit bigger. Don't worry, you're going to end up sanding most of it off anyways just to get both of these two dents straight. So we're going to go ahead and mix some of this filler up. Go ahead and put it on the top and the front here, and then we'll sand it. And then I'm gonna show you guys a cool little trick on how to mask so you don't get a hard edge when you go to prime. Just like on the cab corner, we'll start with 80 grit and then work our way up to 320.
All right, that's pretty smooth. It's ready for some paper, and then you can go ahead and prime it too. Sounds good. All right, so normally when you would tape this off, intuitively you would probably tape it like this and just make a border around where you don't want paint, but having the tape right on the surface makes a really hard edge, so what we're actually gonna do is turn the paper around. We'll lay the paper down, and then we will fold the paper kind of back over itself, and the paper is gonna create a round edge, so when you go to paint, the paint will kind of loft in, and then it makes it easier to kind of blend out when you start sanding. We're going with DupaColor's Primer Filler, which will give us a good base when we go back to finish it with paint a little bit later. That looks uh, really good, actually. Yeah, you did a nice job in the bodywork, so just a couple more coats here, and then we get it cleaned up. Yeah, that's the joys of using spray paint, right? right yeah. If you like anything you've seen, be sure to check out Power Nation TV.